Okay, thanks, Heinrich. Um, yeah, uh, it's right. eBay has a, uh, around one or above 100 million uh, app downloads, so it's a huge number. It's an international company. Um, but I want to use this talk to not too specifically talk about yeah, how do we launch in different markets, how do we do it from the kind of Scrum or Kanban processes, um, just to have some expectation management. We are, our office is here based in in Berlin, you can always talk to us if you're really interested in how we do software development, how we want to um, roll out our, our global products that are primarily released in the, uh, or developed in the US. So just just come to us and speak directly so we can go into the specifics. I guess for a Wednesday afternoon session, let's try to make it a bit uh, lively. So if you have any questions, just um, raise your hand and, um, yeah, and ask what, whatever you want. And this can also be like really eBay process specific. Yeah, so um, my name is Cornelius Rapsch and um, working like for the last four years on in the mobile industry, like the smartphone app ecosystem. And this talk is primarily meant to kind of conclude whatever I learned with releasing for uh, non-German markets, releasing global, uh, global products. And um, yeah, let's start um, this way. So what's interesting, um, beginning of March, I guess everyone knows Lars Hinrichs. He's like uh, the founder of uh, Xing and also like, having like a famous incubator, um, Hack Forward. And he was asked like, what co okay, what are successful companies in, in Berlin? And um, he said, oh, they are not really successful company looking at an international level. It's more about yeah, hipster companies. That's, that's a crazy statement, and um, I hope you all disagree. Of course, there are companies like SoundCloud, um, Vuga, uh, ResearchGate, and Zalando, and uh, I see some guys from Kaufter, my former employee, that also released products in uh, Russia and Brazil and Spain and France. So um, there are definitely great success stories here. And, but that's a good good statement. So what does it really mean to be internationally relevant? And uh, I'm not sure how many of you like um, develop for a global market or at least a non-German market. Maybe raise your hand whoever is having like global or saying having a global product. Okay, that's I would say 70 70 percent. That's that's pretty high. Um, so I'm always wondering what it what does it really mean uh, to have a global product. And, um, but yeah, if Lars Henry is saying everyone has to do it, let's, let's go global. And so let's look at some uh, companies and um, the different approaches and what does it really mean to be local. Uh, Yandex is uh, having their the booth here and we all know that Yandex is dominating the Russian search market. It's not Google. And uh, Mercado Libre, uh, not sure if you heard about it. It's like the uh, biggest um, auction uh, classifieds player in Latin America and Brazil. And um, even Amazon is, does not have a presence in, in Brazil. Uh, I think not for the regular online shop. Um, Zalando, everyone knows it. They're crazy about it here in Germany. I mean, they're selling shoes en masse. Uh, and um, of course, they also have European presence, but they are not known in the in the U.S. And the story goes on and on. Craigslist, they are dominating the U.S. market. Everyone knows it. Of course, they have like you can access classified uh, Craigslist here in Germany, but it's eBay Classy uh, Kleinanzeigen that's dominating the market. And so you see, this an ongoing story. And even um, Xing, that Lars Hinrichs found. Yeah, we, we, we know it in, in, in Germany, it's pretty famous, uh, maybe in some other countries as well, in, in Turkey or wherever. Um, but yeah, in the US, it's definitely LinkedIn. Um, so you see, it's all about having strong markets or strong core markets and then figuring out what are uh, other markets that could be interesting. And so we know, okay, we want to go global, reach millions of users. So, and maybe as an indie developer, it's so easy to release to the Play Store and get like this huge distribution. Um, so how, how should I start? What, what's the right market? Where should I go? And if you look like the 
most popular uh, mobile markets, like looking just at iOS and Android device distribution, including tablets. Um, there was a nice study by uh, Flurry, and so you can clearly see why everyone is saying, "Yeah, we want to go global," which means we want to be present on the on the U.S. market, because yeah, it's eight times the size of uh, Germany, so there seems to be some potential. But yeah, it's still like 5,000 kilometers away. Um, that's a big disadvantage. And you can, in a similar way, choose to go to China if you want. Uh, if it's, um, maybe it's harder to, to approach or to go there and to really understand what the difference is. Um, but at least it's a, um, that's why we are all saying, yeah, we like all these global companies like Google, Facebook, eBay, they all operate internationally. Yeah, but they're having strong core markets and always one strong core market being the, the US. And of course, we, we like to have like the sparing partner in Silicon Valley and uh, that are challenging uh, our German companies. So what is it all about? I mean, do we really want to have a global product reaching every user in the world or like every smartphone, every Android user? Um, I mean, of course, we're always afraid of uh, the fear of missing out, uh, FOMO, how it's called, and you're always missing out. I mean, that's, uh, that's uh, how, it's, um, how it goes. And there's an interesting perspective on it. I mean, if you're looking at the top revenue uh, making applications, just like App Store revenues, in-app purchases, paid applications, the top crossing applications, I guess some of you have like paid applications or applications with in-app purchases and always follow like, yeah, where, where I am, how do I compare against the other top applications. Um, so Distimo did a nice study looking at the uh, like most important companies from a revenue perspective. And surprisingly, I looked at it and said, wow, the first five I could not, uh, could not even read, uh, or yeah, uh, four out of five. And well, what's, go what's going on there? And the first one being puzzles, uh, Puzzle and Dragons. And I, I don't know it, maybe, I guess some of you definitely know it because it uh, has been like the top crossing app in, in Japan on iPhone for a year and on Android for more than 180 days. Um, so there must be something behind it. And I guess this app or a huge company is generating hundreds of millions. Uh, so there must be a kind of relevance. So be warned that you're always missing out on, on something and you it's hard to reach the top positions or maybe we are having like a very US, European centric point of view. And um, yeah, check out the first five games, puzzles or social, whatever it is. Um, that's definitely a, a good thing to know. So this is like the general market background. I mean, of course, there are different markets, different opportunities. Um, but how does it look like if you're trying to make this a reality? What are the, like, the biggest, biggest issues that could arise? Um, so let's take a look at some best and worst practices. Like in the last years, whenever I looked at like uh, global products or products that have been adopted to the German market there, always like things appearing now it doesn't work here it doesn't make sense the content is bad so it's more like having a really active view on um, on the differences on the market and now with my role as like a product manager for the ebay mobile apps and uh, mobile websites with really a german perspective uh, it's definitely changing how you look at products so i mean the first thing that comes up to mind whenever uh, every one of you are looking at, yeah, let's go international. So how does your brand or your um, yeah, your company name fit to an international audience? I mean, yeah, for Facebook or Google, it seems to be universal, but you all know the stories where something sounds really crazy in Spanish and you just cannot go to an, with this name to a different market because then it's, yeah, sounds like crap. Um, but it's also right. Um, the example I have shown here, where I worked before, is like Kaufta, which is like means shop there in German, which is like a, a really good name. It means yeah, you can 
see what offers are available and go to the store so shop there and it's perfect people people love it people understand it but it's hard to do like uh, internationalization with uh, this kind of name so but there's always opportunity yeah to to adapt to a different company brand names and um, that's you see on the on the right on the middle and the right side like the russian and spanish um, adoption even different colors but in basically the, the same product so it's always a good way to go if you're unsure if like uh, this fits to if your company or app fits to another market so this was also the case with like the puzzles and dragons one that i showed they have different titles in in korea and japan and uh, for an international audience um, so something really important to consider i mean that's the first impression you make like your brand your, your first screen your appearance um, but then the second step is always like the, the language. I'm often surprised um, to use like US applications and then yeah, see just, um, I mean it's maybe a mobile problem but I use like an iPhone 5 to take the screenshot so it's a state of the art device with like good resolution and still it's like uh, a lot of icons being, yeah you cannot really read it and um, yeah, you have always uh, long German words and you, you, you know it, I guess, from your experience that um, the French language, the, the German language are um, always a bit uh, longer and uh, in Germany we have a lot of funny names to, yeah, that are really long and kind of it's one sentence in one word. Um, of course, we uh, as mobile uh, developers, we should avoid it, uh, maybe going with some more icons and um, but be aware of this problem. And another thing is um, the typical, we call it Denglish, like mixing German and English. Um, it's like the, the current Foursquare version, or I think they maybe released something the, the last days. Um, it's like mixing German German and English in, in funny ways. It says like currently closed and save your, save to do to your to-do list. And um, then, but the application in general is in, in German. So it's like mixed and it's Foursquare, I guess everyone knows Foursquare and they should have some money to and some focus on maybe one of the top mobile markets in general and some uh, adoptions. Um, so language is definitely something to be aware of. Of course, you can use Google Translate as the first approach to get a feeling how it looks like, but um, because it doesn't work to just use English and say, yeah, I. I have an English uh, version of my application, so it's international, it's global. Uh, doesn't work for the German uh, customer. Maybe as a for 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 maybe not even for GitHub or something really technical where like everyone understands English. So still people want to have their the German language and they and they like it. Um, so yeah, Google Translate is uh, uh, is an is an option, but please have some native speaker uh, review the whole the whole thing and make sure that in the process you are, you know you have like um, some content experts some content strategy to uh, really make sure that uh, new strings that are appearing in development are uh, handled by someone or at least some native speaker looking at it especially all the edge cases but i i wouldn't call like safe to do to your to your to-do list an edge case um, maybe just um, just ignores I think some other companies having approaches where it's like crowdsourced, um, everyone can help with the translations and make sure it stays consistent and it's uh, not, or some users are maybe missing out on some strings or the crowdsourcing approach is missing out on some strings and then, then you're lost. Um, so it seems so easy, but yeah, just, just be aware that uh, language adoption is really important. Um, speaking of specifically about the German market, it's pretty obvious that the next slide must be about uh, privacy laws and uh, Germans, uh, the German market being really complicated. Um, or maybe let's ask a question, who's from outside of Germany? Oh, that's, that's good. So I can teach you how to optimize for the German market, then it makes all sense. Um, so. In Germany, yeah, the Germans are very concerned about their privacy because of historic reasons with the, with the GDR and being a surveillance state and maybe because of their serious nature. Um, they, 
I'm, I'm German, <laughs> um, obviously. Um, they, they even demolished some Google, Google uh, Street View cars. So um, at this point, it was clear that you have to be careful when like, releasing a product like this in a, in a new market, um, that you have to, to know the, the impact. I mean, it started like everyone was allowed to blur their houses. So I think 3% of the Germans, they blurred their houses and whole streets were blocked out of uh, Google Street View. And uh, I'm not sure if Google still like, um, I think they stopped at one point <laughs> for the German market to drive around with these cars. Um, yeah, that's that's a really uh, a crazy, a crazy, a crazy product for that's like opening up a whole bottle uh, um, of problems. Uh, but at least in the end, it worked. It, it's pos it's possible. Um, so, how do you? Um, yeah, maybe one one point for like third party um, libraries and the German privacy law. Um, you have to be really careful what uh, where like user data is, is saved i mean as a german company uh, you have to adhere to uh, so as german users to adhere to uh, privacy standards you cannot just save uh, like data in the us and because then it's under uh, us laws and everyone like from the um, yeah central agencies can uh, in special cases access it and so there's very different privacy laws so it's uh, in general you have to be pretty sure when accessing maybe product analytics tools like uh, flurry google analytics or like uh, crash crash analytics bug sense like all these um, um, us uh, i'm not sure if they're all the us but in general you yeah, i think you get it like uh, us products that are hosting the, the data in the us so you have to be careful to not violate uh, anything. Um, so how do you um, like figure out what's, uh, what are the market differences? And I, I think it's okay to really start with uh, stereotypes as a starting point. I mean, I already said like the serious uh, German and uh, especially for eBay, we have like a shopping uh, shopping service like connecting buyers and sellers and we know that German buyers are really um, price conscious so it's really price first then like second value and uh, a lot of other things um, which for some sound, sound, sounds crazy I mean but uh, Germans like to uh, park their Mercedes in front of an Aldi um, just to save some money on products um, so that's some something really important. That's why they also don't like maybe product suggestion because they always think, yeah, it's su suggested. Um, I've, why is it suggested to me? I want to have make my own decision. Maybe it has a higher price point, and so they are uh, very very different. Uh, I mean, the less social, more more serious. Um, I I think Foursquare. With a, with a reason is maybe better working on like uh, in, in, in New York or South by Southwest where everyone is crazy about technology and sharing with their friends and liking everything and um, you have to search uh, a while to find all these Germans that are this enthusiastic about uh, I guess everyone here is enthusiastic about mobile apps and, and sharing and the, the newest application but I know uh, some people here that are scared of having a f or not scared but they don't want to have a Facebook account they don't want to uh, have maybe a, a, a Xing account or it's just like another password somewhere and saving my data somewhere else. so uh, that's definitely something um, important um, to, to consider like what, what are I mean, not all stereotypes are right. That's why uh, I'm not from Bavaria, and it uh, seems like everyone outside of Germany thinks like the Germans are the the people from Bavaria and uh, always going to Oktoberfest. Uh, definitely not the case. And um, still, it's like, of course, part of Germany, and uh, it's it's a good stereotype. I, I like it. I'm fine with it. Um, but maybe that's not the, the typical German users and uh, Germany is a bit bigger, but at least it gives a good uh, direction uh, what you can do. And the same, the same holds true for like the uh, uh, Americans or French persons or British and uh, that's where you can start and there are big differences from what we see in our, uh, in our data and uh, how we optimize for, for different markets to really do a lot of uh, market research, usability labs, user research, and it's often surprising to see so many differences. And that's more like 
for you like a warning sign to um, figure figure out like is it okay if I release my product to 10 markets but I really understand only two and there seems to be nothing happening in the other in the other eight or is it uh, maybe I can change this and try to understand it and um, so my my conclusion is more like uh, have no fear and uh, internationalization in general there are a lot of easy things there are a lot of things that you should be aware of and uh, in general it's more about um, yeah having like a really good market market understanding as i said uh, talk talk to your customers travel to the market try to meet meet your customers talk to your customers but also try to explore in general go to the clubs and restaurants and uh, whatever you think is kind of yeah typical for this uh, for this country and um, of course for internationalization i mean you can quickly prove like uh, tech and product feasibility it's often an easy step yeah i have an english version of my application so it's a global product so that's that's fine but maybe they're also like dependencies um, maybe you need some special geo data to figure out where where stores are located or uh, you need special maps because uh, google maps or uh, whatever maps provider are there not providing this uh, level of detail um, maybe there are third-party services that you normally use for maybe printing um, things or shipping things maybe they don't have like a, a US service um, another really important thing is like payment methods uh, Germans they love still love cash and they still love like uh, uh, EFT payments like uh, electronic funds transfers like the Germans all have their bank account it's basically free and you can like really go to your bank with a piece of paper and do like uh, uh, payments and a lot of people still use it I guess here everyone is using kind of online payments and everything is uh, the wallets with just one password. Um, of course, that's an easy way from our perspective, but looking at a broader audience, uh, you have to make sure that they understand the payment methods uh, you offer and uh, some love credit cards because you can just yeah, wait for four weeks to, uh, to pay the other company. So you have like a credit l a limit, which some people really depend on, uh, which is not good uh, some people they definitely want to see the product first it's like um, yeah they want to have an invoice and and this is very uh, different from market to market um, yeah maybe you can discuss later on if uh, someone has experiences in, the, in this field um, but it's always interesting to see like uh, the payment differences in Germany is very very special in this aspect um, so I mean, this basic advice always like uh, focus on fo focus on one market, iterate in this market, figure out if this market works, learn out of it, and if you figure out, yeah, I managed to do this market really works for me, then you can go on to the to the next one. It's more like uh, depending on the kinds of market entry strategy, it's more like a waterfall approach, going deep into one market and understand everything, or it's more like a sprinkler approach that yeah, let's spread it, have my English version ready for everyone, and figure out like where's like the growth the best i mean this happened with social networks where um where some companies started in their own market but then at one point it was like um where our biggest growth is in brazil or it's in, in india and so of course there yeah, you can always have like surprises which is which is great but then try to again understand and why 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 is it the case and why are they different and uh, adopt to their needs um in in general and that's like of course for the size of ebay one of uh, big issues i mean com complexity in general try to reduce it as often as you can work on simplification i mean just adding another country it's not like increasing in linear ways it's not like yeah it's we we can still manage it because if you had one and one more country and then at one point you have like x countries but the complexity increases like in an exponential way and at one point you're just getting confused and you don't know where to um, how to release new features if you do it like aligned or across all countries or if you're just keeping focused on one country or two countries and you have like a big two or a big five approach yeah focus on these first or focus on a european launch first and um yeah try to have some kind of strategy how you release features and products and um to get like um yeah 
uh, or otherwise you definitely uh, face the risk that um, you cannot uh, you cannot continue iterating and that's really important too because as I said I, in my whole talk uh, you un to understand the customer the customer needs and to adopt the product and of course be ambitious going global is definitely fun and exciting to talk to different nationalities having different customer groups um, but also be aware of the competitive landscape it doesn't work if you uh, from um, maybe we as Germans and then looking at the Polish market and try to create some real estate side because there are already big companies working on real estate sites in, in Poland totally understanding the markets hundreds of persons just focusing on this market this product so uh, don't be naive to say okay yeah, we can that's a, that's a small country and uh, we, we can just uh, go there it's not a small country and uh, they're definitely uh, very very good uh, companies there um, so that's I think a good good um, yeah good hint so always if you expand internationally think about there is one at least one two teams working on the same product and uh, in this country and really focusing on just this user base um, of course legal requirements as said and um, getting the, the basics right is uh, really important and maybe we just close here and i would really like to get some questions about um, your uh, your experiences and um, where do you see like the biggest challenges and have more like an open open conversation i mean it's a it's a big it's a big uh um, big project to go international uh, i know a lot of painful projects from different companies and how they they approach internationalization but let's see what what's what's your opinion on it first i want to thank you for your presentation